Now let's position our patient. For most ultrasound windows, the patient should be in the left lateral position. I like to ask the patient to tuck their left hand under their head. This is particularly important when we come to the apical four chamber view, as it allows the rib spaces to open up. Sometimes we have to work with the patient's breathing to get the best possible image. Occasionally, we might ask to hold expiration if lung tissue is interfering with the exam. Of course, in critically ill patients, optimal positioning and breath control is frequently not possible. Ultrasound gel provides a conductive medium that allows for better probe contact with the skin and better ultrasound propagation. Plenty of gel is essential in patients with narrow rib interspaces and with prominent chest hair. I like to hold a probe between thumb and forefinger and use my other fingers to stabilize the probe position on the chest wall and prevent unwanted sliding. We will orient the probe marker to the patient's right shoulder. A good place to start is the fourth intercostal space, just lateral to the sternum and at the level of the nipple line. If we go too far laterally, we'll run into lung. If we're too far medial, we'll hit bone. The trick is to find a sweet spot, which is usually fairly close to the sternum. Every patient is different. We may have to slide up or down an interspace to see all the heart. Once we find the heart, we use small movements to optimize and center the image. We slide medially or laterally to center the image. We can also use rocking to better center the image on the screen. We use small rotational movements to make the heart as long as possible. Finally, we may tilt the probe to make sure that we are in the center of the heart. Again, these movements are small and relatively subtle. How do we know when we have a good image? The ideal image should cut through the long axis of the heart and show the left ventricle contiguous with the left ventricular outflow tract. The full motion of two of the aortic cusps and both anterior and posterior mitral leaflets should be apparent. We don't usually see both papillary muscles or the cardiac apex in this view. If we do, the image probably requires adjustment. We can use subtle tilting or rotational movements to correct this. The septum should be relatively horizontal. If you slide too far caudal, you will see that the heart appears smaller and the septum becomes more vertical. It's usually a good idea to start with a maximal depth setting. This helps to visualize structures posterior to the heart, such as a left pleural effusion. Once this so-called scout view is obtained, the depth is reduced so that the heart and the descending thoracic aorta are seen on view. Next, I usually adjust the gain setting so that the blood pool is fairly black, but I can still see endocardial structures such as valves and endocardium. Once my image is optimized, I acquire the image. By this I mean recording either a still frame or video loop. Most focus units, unlike conventional echo machines, are preset to record a clip of a certain time duration, usually two seconds, though this can be customized in the unit subsettings. There may be situations when we wish to record a greater number of beats over an interval of time. 